Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, a few weeks ago, we took a first look at the Taurus 856 and how it's a solid self-defense solution for people who are looking for a simple to operate firearm on a budget. Now, since that video gained so much traction, I wanted to make a video specifically for the beginners out there that might be thinking of or already have purchased their 856 so they have some basics of revolver handling. Now, to start off with, a quick disclaimer, these are my practices. As always, your methods may vary. First off, a quick reintroduction, or maybe an introduction for some of you to our assistant today. This is a Taurus 856 revolver with a six shot cylinder, chambered in 38 Special. It's been upgraded with a Hogue monogrip and reduced power hammer and trigger springs from Wolf Gun Springs, as well as an upgraded front sight from Taurus. Now, the first tip I have for you is how to carry the revolver or show that the revolver is unloaded. When you have the revolvers laying on a table like this, a great way to show that it's unloaded is to open the cylinder by pushing forward on the cylinder release and rotating the cylinder out from the frame. Use your fingers to control the swinging of the cylinder, don't just flick it out. The weapon is physically unable to fire when the cylinder is open like this, so doing this shows that the weapon is not ready to fire. If you need to carry the weapon, a good way to do so is to open the cylinder and then place your fingers completely through the frame. Again, the weapon can't fire with the cylinder open, and putting your fingers through the frame physically prevents the cylinder from closing. Now, you can carry this with the muzzle pointed down, or with the muzzle pointed upwards, like this. Now, the next tip I have is loading and unloading the firearm, which is easy to do now that the cylinder is open. From this carrying grip, you can use your thumb and middle two fingers to control the rotation of the cylinder as you load cartridges in with your other hand. Take a cartridge, load it in, turn the cylinder a little bit, load the next one in, and on and on and on until the cylinder is full. Just like that. When you're done, you rotate the cylinder back in and make sure it locks in place like that. It's also worth it to note here that you should definitely not do the whole Hollywood like spin and slam the cylinder shut that you see in the movies. That's a really good way to damage your weapon. Unloading the weapon is much the same process, just in the reverse order. You open the cylinder by pushing the release forward, and then you rotate the cylinder out from the frame, again using your fingers to control the cylinder and putting your fingers through the middle of the frame in this grip. This puts your thumb in a really good position to operate the ejection rod, and that's what kicks the spent shells out. You can also tip the gun over and let gravity help you kick all those shells out while you push the ejection rod. I should also note here that if you just got done shooting, this middle part of the frame where the cylinder is can sometimes be warm or a little bit hot, so just be aware of that. The next tip I have for you is the sights and how to line them up. On the 856 and on a lot of compact revolvers like this, the rear sight is super low profile and it's easy to overlook and think that you don't have a rear sight. It's actually there, it's machined right into the top of the frame here. And for proper sight picture, it's just like any other gun. You want the top of the front sight to line up with the top of the rear sight. Kinda like that. That's a proper sight picture right there. Now let's talk firing grip. Since the revolver is structurally different from a semi-automatic handgun, the firing grip needs to be altered a little bit. Specifically, your support thumb, in my case my left thumb, needs to be away from this side of the weapon. You can see if I grip this revolver with the same grip that I use for a semi-auto gun, my thumb ends up here, touching the cylinder and really close to this area where the chamber and the barrel meet. This is dangerous because during the shot, hot gas has come out from this area since it's not closed off like it is with a semi-auto gun. If your thumb is there, you might end up getting burnt a little bit. The solution here is to keep the thumb away from this area. Uh, I like to put my thumb here on the top of my knuckle of my other hand and pinning it against the grip. This keeps my thumb away from the hot gases as well as keeps it back and out of the way of the trigger and my trigger finger. After that, the firing grip is very similar to a semi-automatic handgun. Use firm even pressure on all sides, push forward with the strong hand and pull backwards with the support hand. Now, my last tip is about the trigger. The 856 is a double single action revolver which means that it has two ways of firing. Once the weapon is loaded up and you're on target and ready to fire, you can do one of two things. You can just pull the trigger, which will pull the hammer back and then release it, causing the gun to fire. This is called double action since the trigger performs two actions. It pulls the hammer back and then releases it to go forward. Alternatively, you can manually pull the hammer back with your thumb until it locks in place like that before you pull the trigger. With the hammer in this rear position, pulling the trigger will release the hammer and cause the gun to fire. This is called single action since pulling the trigger performs just the one action of releasing the hammer forward. These two shooting modes feel pretty different, the trigger weights are different and the feel is different, so it's always a good idea to practice both thoroughly. So that's it, a few basic tips on revolvers for beginners. Combined with the basic rules of firearm safety, these tips should set you up for success when handling or shooting a revolver. 
I will drop a link in the description to the links page of the blog where you'll find links to Brownells where I got the E56 and some of the upgrades that we put on it. In the next video, we have an intro to the newest review gun in this table, so don't miss out on that. Throw me a like or a comment if you like what I'm doing here. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff, and don't forget to ring the bell on your way out. Till next time, stay safe.